I guarantee you that the Cardano ghost chain narrative is the single biggest lie in the entire industry, and that's saying something. If you're one of those independent thinking few that's actually going to do their own research and look for themselves what kind of quality stands behind all of these different projects, then this video will give you at least somewhat of a decent framework of what you can prioritize and what you can start paying attention to. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh, and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. Let's make one thing absolutely clear. This tier list is not based on how well I think each of these tokens are going to do in this next bull market. I mean, that is part of it, but it's, it's only a small part of it. If markets were perfectly rational, then maybe performance might look something close to what this tier list is going to look like, but, uh, but that's not the point here. This tier list is only some of the top Cardano native tokens in the ecosystem, and actually, I've left out quite a few that are some of my favorite tokens. Depending on how well this video does and how interested you guys are in this kind of content, I may do a, a series of, of videos like this, and then at the end, maybe I'll do like a battle of champions type of thing. I don't know. We'll start here first and see where it goes. So when I rank these projects, I'm using a sort of aggregated criteria of token utility, the team member experience, the community, the marketing capability, and the value for decentralization. But regardless of how I personally rank each of these projects, be sure to jump in the comments, tell me where you disagree, or just show your support for your favorite project, because at the end of this whole thing, if this series continues, I'll probably uh, give a couple of projects a, a second look, a second chance, based on community-driven picks to make it into that sort of tournament of champions type thing. So uh, hit it up, get started. Okay, so the first project that we're starting with here is SNEC. And if you've watched my channel before, you know that I am not a fan of meme coins. So the fact that I am even mentioning SNEC uh, should say something about the quality of this project. SNEC is Cardano's most popular meme coin. It has taken the industry by storm. It's won favor from a bunch of different people in the crypto industry, even outside of Cardano, and it's been scoring centralized exchange listings left and right. This one has one of the strongest communities in the ecosystem by far. But when I go to rank this one, I can't give it an S tier, and I'll tell you why. Based on the criteria that I've set, I do not know what the professional experience is of this team, because they're not doxxed. I, there's no direct utility to it by definition because it's a meme coin. That, that's not the point of what it is. So where I rank this one is actually, I think rather generously, in the A tier. It doesn't bother me that the team is not doxxed. That's not why I'm like, it, it's keeping it out of the S tier. I actually like the founder and I think he's contributed a lot, especially to the NFT space on Cardano before he started SNCC. Uh, but I just, I can't give it points for something that I can't see. If I'm looking at this project purely driven and, and setting aside any of my personal biases against meme coins, I look at the community behind this project. I look at what they're doing outside of crypto to uh, score some adoption and bring some attention towards Cardano, and what they have done is impressive. So that's why I rank it the way that I do. Next up on the list, we have Iagon, which is a decentralized cloud computing service that has configured their pricing to be one of the least expensive services in the entire industry, not just in crypto. They've also arguably got a superior product than anybody else in the industry of cloud storage services, especially when it comes to security and reliability. When it comes to the D-PIN narrative that everybody's been talking about in crypto, Igon is one of the two first projects that people think about when they look at things on Cardano. So this one is a top contender to be benefiting from that narrative if and when it takes off in this next bull market. 
Now, what I love about Iagon is that it's a service that reaches out to the greater industry beyond crypto. This one is a solid project, but I still only rank it in the A tier. Now, those of you that are thoroughly aware of what Iagon is doing and the fundamentals that are backing this project, you're probably already in the comments section calling me an idiot for not putting it up into the S tier because the fundamentals behind this project is so superior to so many other projects in the ecosystem. I'll explain exactly why Iagon is not landing in the S tier, and the reason for that is, is a couple of things. Like, first of all, the token is only really going to be accessible on Cardano. They're not really doing the whole multi-chain thing, which means that people are going to have to come to Cardano in order to get that. And I, I just don't see that happening before multi-chain projects get there first. The inflows of liquidity into Cardano is relatively difficult right now. So the only way that people are going to be getting it is through centralized exchanges, and they really have to be on major centralized exchanges like Binance, Coinbase, maybe Kraken, uh, if you, you know, want to extend the, the definition. And if those major centralized exchanges are not going to build the infrastructure to be able to support Cardano native tokens, which, uh, as far as I've seen, isn't looking great at the moment right now, then the ones that are going to be getting on those centralized exchange listings are going to be the ones that are expanding multi-chain and have a Ethereum-based token where people can get access to it. The second reason that Igon doesn't quite make it into that S tier is uh, because based on some of the rough math breakdowns of what I have seen the returns look like based on their pricing and based on the amount of uh, supply that they have for people that are supplying their their extra hardware space to the Iagon network. Based on what I've seen, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a very substantial return for those people that are supplying the service. Now, in the very long run of this project, as they provide services to the greater space outside of crypto, that shouldn't really matter. But that's long term. If we're looking at this particular bull market, uh, I, I don't think that people are going to be very impressed with their earnings from supplying to the Igon network. Uh, you still, you know, will need to get into this project early if you do want to supply anything substantial because the, the amount of storage that you can supply to the network is based on how many Igon tokens you own. But the reason that I say that it shouldn't really matter long term is because their pricing is so inexpensive, it's so cheap, that people accessing these services from greater industries outside of crypto, the pricing is so cheap, it's so desirable that people are going to be flooding to get access to this service. Because cloud storage is a necessary business expense for so many businesses around the world. So, in a nutshell, the reason that Igon doesn't quite make it to that S tier for me is because those uh, people that are looking for those services, I don't think that they're going to be looking at Igon during this next bull market. I think that they'll slowly start to grow and they will become a major player in the space. I actually believe that. Their fundamentals are strong enough to make it there, but it's not going to happen in the next one to two years. I realize that I took a long time to justify that, but like, you, you gotta understand that the fundamentals behind Igon are like out of this world. This is an amazing project. I just don't think that the performance of it is, is really gonna be based on people actually utilizing the service. It, it may be based on like, you know, hype and uh, people that are really excited about what this project could do. That's definitely well-reasoned, but uh, I don't think that the actual backing of people using that service is, is actually going to happen in this bull market. The next project on my list is Book.io with the Book token. And these tokens have a wide variety of utilities in the ecosystem that they are developing to put readership on blockchain. And these guys, they're experienced in their industry. They know what they're doing. They they have done multi-million dollar ebook stuff 
before. They've got major partners behind them in the realm of publishing. They've got major investors behind them that have helped connect them to a bunch of different places. And out of all the projects in all of crypto that are doing this whole book NFT thing, Book.io by far does it better than all of them. So I rank them in the S tier. The market cap of book tokens is still pretty incredibly low for the amount of fundamentals that is backing this project with all the experienced investors and everything. Uh, but the reason for that is probably because the token is currently only accessible on Cardano. That's gonna change very, very soon. They are gonna be expanding to multiple blockchains. They already have a fan base on ecosystems like Polygon and Algorand and uh, I think they've got a, a growing base on Avalanche and on Ethereum. They're, they are out there with a lot of awareness in this space, and the only reason that people aren't buying the token like crazy is because they can't access it right now. On paper, according to at least my personal criteria, this project is perfect. They check all the boxes when it comes to experience, when it comes to token utilities out of this world token utilities. Uh, they're doing everything right when it comes to connections in the space. Did I talk about the experience yet? Uh, this is one of the things that I love to brag about when it comes to this team, is that they have real industry experience in doing this outside of blockchain, and they're taking that experience when they're developing this project. I legitimately have nothing to criticize this project about, even if I was pretending, even if I was trying to come up with something that I wanted to slap uh, against this project, there's no legitimate argument that I can come up with that is actually something that they're really doing wrong. And I mean that even principally speaking. Like, they value decentralization so much more than many other projects than I, I can name out in the ecosystem, both within Cardano and outside. And, like, they're, they're opening up accessibility to as many people as they can. This is definitely a game-changing project. It's one that you do not want to miss. The next project on my list, or I guess token, I should say, is the Shen token. And if you're not familiar with this one, this is the token that is the reserve currency for the Jed stablecoin. I have talked about the Jed stablecoin before. I like their mechanics, and I have very little doubt that the Jed stablecoin is going to depeg at least uh, below the US dollar value simply because uh, it is properly backed. It is properly uh, supported by the value in the treasury. The concept and mechanisms behind it is very strong, but even though I, I like the way the Jed stablecoin operates, and the Shen token is an important part of that ecosystem, I still rank this one down in the D category. Maybe it's just too early in the development of this stablecoin, not a lot of people have been interacting with it, so Shen token holders don't really get a whole ton of reward from these mechanisms, and uh, that sucks. Based on what I observe, the, the Shen token is, is really just like a little step above ADA when it comes to the amount of revenue that you can generate, because with the Shen token, you can get staking rewards from it, from the ADA that is, is locked into the Jed stablecoin treasury. Uh, so you are getting that, plus you're getting a little bit from the fees from minting and burning the Jed stablecoin, but that's just not happening uh, at a, a very big pace. So I'm not really impressed with the Shen token as a investable asset. I don't think that it's gonna take off. It'll probably scale somewhat closely with ADA as a token, but that's that's about it. The next token on our list is the MIN token. This one is from the MinSwap token uh, for the, the MinSwap protocol, which is the biggest decentralized exchange on Cardano. And, uh, from this one, you would think that it would land in the S tier because they're doing everything well. They're the best, uh, well, the the, the top uh, decentralized exchange in the Cardano ecosystem. But I, I actually rank the Min token down in the C tier. 
I like MinSwap as a decentralized exchange a lot. I use it all of the time, but I'm just not really impressed with the utility behind the Min token. They are the biggest decentralized exchange in the Cardano ecosystem, and still, I don't see anybody bragging about the revenue that they're generating from staking the Min token on the protocol. And they've also built in some additional utilities of getting a fee discount on the protocol by holding more min token, but it's just not really that impressive. I, nobody is buying this token for fee discounts on MinSwap. And I haven't tracked the price of this token very closely, but based on what I have been observing, it seems like the, uh, the token supply that's diluting the overall circulating supply has been consistently been dumped on the market. So it's it's not anything that people are actively in demand for. And I understand that we're still coming out of the bear market. Uh, the bull market is here, but it hasn't really hit altcoin season yet. And maybe that might turn some things around for this token. But um, yeah, I, I just, I, there's, there's not enough creativity. There's nothing new here brought that will really wow people and, uh, that's why I rank it down in the C category, despite it representing the biggest decks in the ecosystem. The next project on this list is the Indigo Protocol, which is a decentralized finance product on blockchain. And in my opinion, they hold to principles of decentralization much stronger and much better than a lot of different projects in this space, especially in DeFi. It feels like they're actually doing things new, that are creating uh, creative products. Like, you know, they're, they've created an algorithmic stablecoin that I think actually has some, some pretty strong fundamentals. It's lost peg a few times throughout this bear market, but like, it's still an algorithmic stablecoin. They've also created an algorithmic Bitcoin stablecoin, which the mechanics make sense to me, the way that the, the open market has reacted to it, not so rational, but I, I get what they're doing here. I haven't personally interacted with this team myself, anybody from them, uh, but based on what I've heard secondhand, I have heard that these are some fantastic guys behind this project, both from a business perspective and from a principle perspective. They're very big on their principles of decentralization. They're very all about the business. They know what they're doing. They've got good experience behind them and they're building everything very efficiently. They're doing everything uh, very, very well thought, very strategic. Uh, and there've only been like a few instances where I'm not really sure where they're going with it. Like with their integration of decentralized oracles. At first, they were going to be running through Charlie 3, which is the only active decentralized oracle in the ecosystem right now. And, and then they decided that they were going to go with one of the competitors that isn't live on the mainnet yet, at least doesn't have an active product that are, that's available for them to use. And, and I'm not sure if that's still happening or if they're, they're going back to Charlie 3 again. I don't know, I haven't kept up well enough with this project. But what I ultimately end up ranking this project, at least when it comes to the token, is actually in the B tier. The reason that I rank this token in the B tier is because they're building on Cardano. Based on what I've observed, they don't have any plans to expand into multiple blockchains. They're not doing anything to create more inflows of liquidity from other areas where that liquidity exists, where it's established. They're not like looking to be collaborative in that way. And, uh, I don't think that that's really going to help them when it comes to getting listed on centralized exchanges, where more flows of liquidity could potentially come from those areas. So I think that this project is going to be very isolated on Cardano, and the only way that they're going to get access to any of that liquidity is if they're able to capture attention within Cardano, among the many voices in Cardano, after they come in from other projects that are expanding multi-chain. Those multi-chain projects, those are gonna be the ones that get those first dibs on liquidity, whether it be from those other ecosystems that have that established liquidity from true crypto believers, or from the centralized exchanges that are listing them because they're being more interoperable, because they're getting out there, because they're not isolated and people are actually interested in them outside of just 
the Cardano community. I'm actually hoping that my assessment is wrong here. I don't pay super close attention to this project because I don't own any of the assets from this project, but I do legitimately actually really, really like this project for a lot of different reasons. The problem is that I just, I don't see it uh, really taking off in this next bull market without those particular fundamentals and being able to stand out amongst the crowd. I care about decentralization, but that doesn't mean that the masses are going to. And if it if there's more hurdles for them to ha get access to this token, then uh, then they're they're just not going to do it. The next project on my list is Project Noom, and uh, this is one of my absolute favorite products in this space because they're creative. They're not following the same narratives of other projects. They're just building DeFi. And, you know, they, they are decentralizing music. They're creating the capability for artists to be able to take back control of their music. This project is amazing in so many different ways. They have created a way so that if you listen to artists that are signed up on their platform on, on Spotify, then by listening to that song or any of their tracks that are connected to their platform, it automatically, with the royalties that it generates, triggers a purchase of ADA, which gets swapped for Noom tokens so that it can be distributed to royalty holders. So by listening to music, you are pumping the price of ADA. You're putting liquidity into the Cardano ecosystem. That's freaking impressive. Where I ultimately end up putting this project is in the A tier. And I'm, I'm going to put it right here between Igon and Snick. The reason that this project ends up in the A tier and not the S tier, even though I'm in love with this project in every which way, is because... Kind of similar to the, the concerns that I shared with, with Indigo. Like those inflows of liquidity from expanding multi-chain, I'm not so sure that they're, they're making the right moves so that people on Ethereum will, will you know, go and buy the Noom token specifically. Or they'll, they'll get it on, on the Binance Smart Chain or, or some other, you know, Ethereum Layer 2 or Polkadot or wherever. This, this one's mainly going to be on Cardano. They are included in uh, some some uh, index funds that allows people from other chains to be able to get exposure to this token, but not to this token specifically. Now, here's why this little fact of their situation doesn't impact them quite as much as it does with other products. And it's because the primary audience of this product is not Web3 investors, people that are, are crypto enthusiasts that want the token to pump to the moon, th those are not the people that they're going after. They're going towards traditional music audiences, artists out there that are creating, and their listeners that are, are listening to their music on all of these different platforms. Th those are the people that they are reaching out to, and those are the people, without even knowing it, are going to be able to contribute to the Cardano ecosystem. When it comes to this team's experience, they have so much impressive experience when it comes to the development side, when it comes to the music industry. They've, they've got all of the right experience, is what I'm trying to say. And it's amazing to me how saturated this space is with people that are principled, but this team especially is very principled when it comes to their value for decentralization, for power to the people instead of the hands of like, you know, major music industry leaders. They're really creating those tools to be able to give that power back to musicians. Th those people aren't even really actively looking for those solutions. They know that the problem exists, but Noom is solving it for them. And that's why this one lands in the A tier. The next project on this list is Cornucopius. And those of you that watch my channel regularly know I talk about this project more than almost any other project in this ecosystem. I love them. I think that they're doing absolutely everything right. They're building a quality game, an MMO that's, that I think is, is set to be the biggest in-game universe in the entire industry. Their fundamentals are off the charts. They have incredible talent behind this team, and what they have built so far is phenomenal. It's really on that cutting edge of technology in, in every way. Not, not just technology, but like gaming graphics and like blockchain 
technology. Their marketing is, is on point. I am putting this project in the S tier, and I'm actually going to put it ahead of Book Token. The guys behind this team are not your top tier professionals that have worked for big Fortune 500 companies. No, the guys behind this team are people that have built tools that these big Fortune 500 companies need and they sell those tools to them for multiple millions of dollars. Those are the guys that are behind this team. Of all of the projects in this entire space, Cornucopius is the one that I cannot shut up about. I can talk to you about them for hours. I can brag about every which way all of the talent behind this team in the realm of game development and, and artist development and business strategy and business skill. When it comes to marketing, they're absolutely killing it and they have an incredible strategy. Principally speaking, I have not seen a game anywhere that sticks to their principles of decentralization so much more deeply than anybody else all of these other gaming projects are just trying to create cool games, and these guys are too, but they also really care about what this industry is supposed to do. They are creating use cases of blockchain technology in their game that are so creative, that are so different, that's this really pushing the limits of what this industry is capable of in the realm of gaming. It's, it's so impressive. And I think that more than any other project in this space, Cornucopius is really getting out there and, and establishing that, that principle of interoperability. They're the one that's most aggressive when it comes to that multi-chain expansion and allowing people from other ecosystems to be able to get access to this token. Already, right now, as we speak, you can get Copy on Ethereum through Uniswap. You can get Copy on uh, Cardano, that's kind of their home area where all of the NFTs live, and you can get it on the Binance Smart Chain. And this has been true for, for a year now, at least. Well, no, actually, I might have my timing wrong on that one. Uh, for years, you've been able to get it on Cardano and Binance, but uh, on, on the Ethereum blockchain, that, that one, what is it, like six months now? I, I don't know. They expanded relatively recently. And based on a lot of the moves that they have been making lately to uh, get more users in the Ethereum ecosystem, it looks like they're going to be expanding pretty aggressively onto the base ecosystem with that's the layer two on, on the Ethereum blockchain that is built by the Coinbase team. There's a lot of talk on social media about which Cardano native token people think are gonna be the first one to land on Coinbase. And I think Kopi is gonna be that token mostly because yes, their fundamentals are on point. Yes, their product is incredible. They are interoperable and they're expanding to multiple blockchains, but they're the only one that's really trying to get into that base ecosystem. And they've got the fundamentals to do it. That's gonna catch the attention of Coinbase. And I think that that's what's gonna allow them to be able to get listed on Coinbase first, ahead of all of these other projects. If you're interested about hearing more about Cornucopius, I talk about it all the time. I've got like 30 videos over the lifetime of this channel on Cornucopius specifically. Uh, I'll link a playlist at the end of this one if you wanna check them out. It's definitely worth a look. There's a lot of people talking about this project. The next project on this list is AXO, and it is one that I have loved ever since before they were AXO. They used to be called Maladex, and I have liked them a lot, but disappointingly, I'm actually gonna put this token in the B tier. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of a tie with Indigo, I guess, because they, they suffer from the same problem. AXO is such an amazing project, it, it really, it kills me to put them in the B tier, at least when it comes to the token. Their team might very well be the single most talented, most experienced team when it comes to the development side of things in the entire Cardano ecosystem. It's definitely true that they've got the biggest team of Haskell developers behind them. A lot of other projects, sometimes if they're lucky, they have one. But these guys have like, I don't know, eight or 12 or something. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. AXO is an incredible example for what kind of functionality, what kind of things can be created when it comes to DeFi use cases on Cardano. They've created some really impressive stuff and they're, they're continuing to grow. The reason that I put AXO, the token, in the B tier 
is because it probably will be suffering from a lot of the same issues of being isolated within Cardano. Uh, they're not going to get those first accesses to the established liquidity in other ecosystems. They have to be able to stand out, and I do think they're going to stand out because they create such crazy innovative stuff on Cardano. They will have financial products that nobody else on Cardano is going to have. They serve as an example of what could be capable, and other projects in DeFi are looking to AXO to see what's possible. So they've got the experience, like crazy experience. They've got the community. The community is incredibly strong on Cardano and very excited about what AXO is capable of. They've got the product. So the question is, what's wrong with it? Why am I putting it in the B tier? The reason that the token is landing in the B tier is because I'm not really finding the token utilities all that compelling. Uh, like, I mean, it's a, a DEX token, kind of. There are other utilities that are involved with it, some of which seem kind of interesting and I think have some potential, but I, I don't know if I find them compelling to where I would see a massive amount of investors decide that like that is a utility that I think I can profit off of like crazy, so I'm gonna dump millions into this token. I just don't really see that happening with this one. I find it really interesting that this token will be used as a layer two currency that you'll be able to pay transaction fees with. Uh, I don't know how soon that's gonna happen though, and the development in that area might be kind of slow. It might not be something that comes about in this next bull market. I, I legitimately want to put AXO higher because it's that good of a project. I wanna throw it in the S tier because in terms of fundamentals when it comes to team member experience and, and what it is that they've created and how impressive that is, that's S tier quality, but I don't think that people are going to be discovering AXO first when it comes to the, the Cardano ecosystem. And when they do discover it, I'm not sure that they're going to be super uh, thrilled or impressed with it as, as they will about the AXO is too mature for, for this market. That's what I think. People are going to go and they're going to read this like long 96 page white paper or that they're going to take a glance at it and then they're going to walk away because it's too dense and, and they're going to get bored with it. This is not something that's going to attract a bunch of degens. This is not something that's going to attract a bunch of like hyper major investors because they might see the fundamental quality in it, but they don't think that everybody else will. And that, that's kind of where I'm at with this. I think that AXO is an incredibly strong long-term play because they will be here in five to 10 years. They are going to be creating some of the most incredible stuff that we've seen in the Cardano ecosystem that other people are going to be trying to emulate. They're, they're trendsetters and they're, they're underappreciated ones, and I think it's, it's going to kind of continue with that pattern. I don't know if I see AXO getting listed on any centralized exchanges. I mean, given that they just launched their token relatively recently. Um, I don't really know if any centralized exchanges are, are really looking at this one. And by the time that they do catch wind of it, it might very well be already near the top of the bull market. So yeah, I, I don't know if this one's gonna get a lot of attention in this next bull market, but you know, I think it's a great long-term play with this one because they are gonna keep building and they're passionate about the space. They're principled. I can brag about them for ages. They're, they're too good for this space. The last token on this list is the Hosky token. And let me tell you, it's a meme coin, all right? It's, it's the only meme coin that I can say that I like. Uh, they, they educate people in this space. They're hilarious. And they've really created this culture in Cardano that, that is, it's, it's really, it's different, all right? It's, it's something that I, I enjoy a lot and I think contributes a lot of value. According to the meme, according to the joke, they want to be in the D tier. They want people to think we're going to zero. They, they want people to, uh, to be on this like, you know, this is a garbage token sort of bandwagon. But I'm putting it in the C tier. <laughs> and the reason that I'm putting it there is because they provide too much value. Look, any of the Cardano OGs in this space, they know Hosky token. They know what they're all about. They know the value that they've contributed. They're fantastic. But like, honestly, as a meme token, they're not really seen 
as a meme token. They're not a popular meme token. I don't think they're going to be rushing to get a bunch of investors involved in this one. This token is not going to pump, and that's kind of because of the narrative that they've created that uh, this token's going to zero. It's a funny meme, it's a funny culture, and I think that they've done it really well. I just don't think that it's going to be compelling enough and, and people want to hear about how their token's going to be pumped like crazy, go to the moon, and make them rich. That's that's what they want to be hearing. They don't want to be called out. Like, Hosky token makes people, at least in the meme coin community, I think, feel seen and, and not in a good way. Sometimes I think that Hosky token is, is too mature for meme coiners because the joke is hilarious. It's, it's, it's really funny and it, it like it opens people's eyes. It makes people realize like how ridiculous degen culture is and, and it, it should like I think help people not to get scammed out of things. But uh, we've seen from this, uh, this meme coin trend that's happening in the market right now Apparently, that's that's still very much alive. I put this token in the C tier because, I don't know, if you're looking for a project that's going to appreciate really well, Hosky token will still be around. Hosky token is something that Cardano OGs are never going to forget. They have demonstrated that, you know, at least I think it's just one person behind it. He's not going anywhere. He's somebody that's actively contributing to the space. He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to be, like, made rich or anything. And, and like, he, he's become associated with the brand of Cardano. He's here to stay. He will be here. Cardano G's will keep talking about it. But I don't think anybody's going to get super excited about this token in this next bull market. Which, uh, honestly, is uh, probably the point of, of what he's trying to do. I don't know. This one's very confusing for me. Uh, I don't know if I should put it in the, the D tier because he's doing such a great job <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's where it lands. It's not that great of a token. They know that. That's going to be it for this token list here. And uh, one of the things, I was supposed to plug this sometime in the middle of the video somewhere, but I forgot about it. The way that we get these tokens listed on something like iTrust Capital is to become users on iTrust Capital. None of these tokens or any other Cardano native token except for ADA is listed on iTrust Capital. And that's wild because the fundamentals behind this project, it has huge upside potential. They're sticking around for a while, but the only reason that iTrust Capital is gonna move to list any of these tokens, it's if their users want them. So we need to become users. If you wanna make the smart decision like many people have by starting to save for your retirement, why not go ahead and do it in a tax-free way by getting into a 401k or digital asset IRA with iTrust Capital? If you use my affiliate link down in the description below, you can get $100 towards your first account with iTrust Capital. You may as well take advantage of it. It's free money, and we can get these Cardano native tokens finally on this platform. So yeah, I'd appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.